it was a huge event in my life, huge. Uh, the making of the film had so many um, mysterious and frightening aspects to it. You know, it it was as though we were we were playing with fire, and uh, it, it's inexplicable the number of tragedies that occurred during the course of the film. And it's not anything that I would have any real theory about, but it was obvious, you know, it was that we were um, attracting certain kinds of energy. So that was an aspect of it that we all lived through and had to deal with in our own way. I mean, Billy Friedkin started out the film from a very psychological point of view. And in a very short time, he was having each new set blessed by the priest <laughs> of the set <laughs> because it, was, it, got, it got very scary. Um, Billy was, a, of course, a master craftsman. It was, uh, it was challenging to work with him. He was helpful. Sometimes he was um, distracting. I don't think anybody could expect it to be as successful as it was. I remember the day it opened, sitting in my kitchen in Los Angeles, having my early morning coffee, and the TV was on, and I looked up and saw this line of people in Montreal in a blizzard who had been standing in line for four hours before the theater opened in a blizzard. And I, th trying to wake up with my coffee, I remember thinking, what on earth do they expect to see? You know, what, what could be worth standing four hours in a blizzard? And they were going to stand there longer. The, the, uh, the success of it was just beyond anybody's expectations. I remember I had a really f funny incident. I heard about people fainting in the movie. I always thought it was in the demon parts, in the really scary parts that they fainted. But I discovered when the real fainting occurred, I was shooting Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore in Tucson, Arizona, and The Exorcist opened in town. So I invited the cast and crew to be my guest and come to a screening and have a little party afterwards. So we went to the opening. And during the film, at the point where Linda Blair gets a needle in her neck and the blood squirts out, that's the part where everybody fainted. It was at the medical procedures, not the demon. And this woman ran up the aisle and fainted and collapsed on the floor. And I, without thinking, jumped up and ran over to her. And she was, and I took her hand and I was patting her hand and talking to her and she was about to open her eyes. And I thought, oh my God, if she opens her eyes and sees the first thing she sees is my face, she's gonna think she died and went to hell or something. So I quickly called somebody else over and said, here, take her hand. And I ran away. But that's what all the fainting was about. It was the medical procedure, not the demon. Why did you say yes to doing the film? Why wouldn't I? I mean, of, of course I would want to do it. It was the acting coup. I mean, everybody wanted that role. It was a very successful book. Um, Billy called me and, and asked to ask for a meeting. And he had just seen the last picture show, I believe, and, um, and something else, maybe The King of Marvin Gardens. And he asked for a meeting, and I said, all right, but I find meetings in offices very uncomfortable. Do you mind coming to my house? And he said, no. I don't know where I got the nerve to say that, but I did. And he came to my house, and we had a long, um, about an hour long, conversation. I was very impressed with him. He's a very cultured man. He uh, knows a lot um, about literature and music and art. And I thought he was really wonderful. So I 
I told him I was interested in doing the role. And he said, all right, I'm not going to um, keep you hanging on this. I'll tell you the truth. It's between you and Anne Bancroft. And I'm going to New York to meet her. And I'll let you know right away. So he, he went on a, uh, he went to Washington to look at sets. And then he went to New York. And he called me from New York and he said, okay, you've got the role. I ran into Anne Bancroft at the grocery store and she looked like hell. I said, Billy, that's not fair. I look like hell in the grocery store too. He said, yeah, well, these are the jokes. So that's how I got the role. And later did parts that I wanted to do. <laughs> uh, we exchanged roles many times and, you know, almost getting this and lost it to the other one. So that's how I got the role. I was very um, pleased to, to get the role. I had no idea what it was going to take to um, sustain for, I think we shot for eight months, eight or nine months, um, to sustain the level of intensity that was required for the film.